as I've pointed out, I like to look at the same problem in many different ways because in looking at, at it in different ways, we gain new insight. So, in the last video, we rearranged this equation so that it became obvious how to compute the component of AK orthogonal to all of the uh, column and uh, all of the vectors Q0 through QK minus 1 that we had computed previously. Let's restore that equation. So we'll go back to saying this is equal to, and we'll put the pluses over here in order to um, re-establish that equation. What we're going to do next is relate the um, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization method to uh, the QR factorization of a matrix. And how does that go? Well, as you've seen a number of times already, we like to take vectors and make them into the columns of matrices. So here I've taken all of these vectors that we started with that were linearly independent. I've placed them into a matrix. And similarly, I've taken the vectors that become the orthonormal basis and I've placed them into a matrix. If we now focus on the kth column right here, AK, then we have this right here. Now notice that AK is actually computed uh, or is equal to the linear combination of all of the columns up to and including QK. And we can write that as a matrix vector multiplied by saying Hmm. This, it's this matrix times row 0k, row 1k, and so forth, all the way up to row kk. If you multiply this matrix times that, whoops, the size doesn't fit, so we need to place a bunch of zeros at the end here. Okay? And notice that if you do this times this plus this times this and so forth, then you get exactly the right-hand side of this. And then if you place zeros for the rest, then you don't take linear combinations of the remaining uh, vectors q, k plus 1 through n minus 1. And therefore, we have established this equality now expressed as this matrix vector multiplied. Now, we can go one step further and say, oh, but we can do that for every uh, column of this matrix, every vector a sub k. And what do we get then? Well, then what we do is say, okay, well, if I say I want to come up with an expression so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, then I can place a matrix here and I can place this row 0, k, row 1, k, and so forth right here. k, k, 0, and so forth. And if I make that the column index with k, then indeed this vector on the left-hand side, a, k, is equal to this matrix times that column, so at least this column is equal to the corresponding column if you multiply out the right-hand side. Okay. But you can do that for all previous columns and all subsequent columns. And what you get is row 0, 0 here with zeros below it. Okay. That's because A0 is just row 0, 0 times Q0. And then the same thing for the second column and so forth. Eventually you get row 0, k minus 1 through row 0, sorry, row k minus 1, k minus 1, and then zeros for the rest. And obviously that continues past this column index with k as well. And the point I'm trying to make here is that all of these scalars that we computed, all of these coefficients that we used to take linear combinations 
of the vectors Q can be collected into an upper triangular matrix. And from that we conclude that if we call this matrix A, this matrix Q, and this matrix R, then what we really are doing when we execute the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process is express A as the product of a matrix with orthonormal columns Q times an upper triangular matrix R, and that's it. This matrix is M by N, this matrix is M by N, and matrix R is N by N. So, often when people talk about uh, orthogonalization of vectors, they will say that they want to compute the QR factorization of matrix A, and this captures the relationship between that and the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization method.